One of the questions that I sometimes get from new to Linux users is, Hey DT, why do you spend so much time making videos about things like Vim and Emacs and tiling window managers, all of these programs that are difficult to use, difficult to learn, they're, they're hard pieces of software, right? They're, they're not your normy kinds of pieces of software. Why don't you do more videos about uh, plain text editors like gedit or desktop environments like GNOME? Why do you spend so much time pushing all of this more advanced kind of software? And that is a, a good question. I understand why people ask me that question, and I do have some reasons why I spend so much time promoting things like Vim and Emacs and tiling window managers. So let's discuss that a bit. Reason number one why I push things like Vim and Emacs and tiling window managers is I'm not promoting those programs necessarily. It's not like I'm invested if you use Vim or if you use Emacs or if you use Qtile or Xmonad or the awesome window manager or whatever it happens to be. I don't care personally about the software you use. Um, you make your choices on the software you use. Everyone makes their own decisions on that. But I do want to expose people to freedom. And when I'm talking about freedom, of course, I'm talking about free software, free as in freedom, the ideals of the free software movement to be able to do with your software whatever you want to do. And of course, typically we're thinking about licensing in this regard, but there's more to freedom in my mind than just licensing. I want to expose people to the ultimate configurable and extensible pieces of software out there. The, the pieces of software that you can extend and you can shape and you can create it and you can mold it into whatever you want it to be. And that's kind of what you can do with Vim. It's definitely what you can do with Emacs. And many of the tiling window managers, especially the ones I really focus on on this channel, things like Xmonad, Qtile, the awesome window manager, even DWM through the patching, you know, you can really turn those things into practically anything you can imagine. And, and that's the beauty of these extensible programs. It's not the programs in themselves that I'm promoting. I just want people to be exposed to yeah, you know, if you've never been exposed to these extensible kinds of programs, it is truly uh, it's, it's liberating getting back to the whole freedom thing. It liberates your mind a little bit. What you can do with some of these pieces of software is something you've never been exposed to with any pieces of proprietary software. So those of you that are primarily living in the Windows world and the Mac world, you know, you've never you've never seen what you can do with truly extensible pieces of software, even like Linux and, you know, a lot of your standard shell commands and things like that. You can extend these things in such powerful ways. And that's why I make these videos pushing some of the, especially the ultra nerdy stuff. Ultimately, I just want people to understand what their software could be. Now, whether you want to make it into that, again, that's up to you. I, I, if you want to put in that work or maybe you don't, and I'm cool with that. I just want people to know that this stuff is out there and that these things are possible. And the other reason I want to expose people to things like Vim and Emacs and Xmonad and DWM and things like that is because to truly configure these things, you have to do a little programming. You have to do a little scripting in various languages. Uh, Vim, you know, standard Vim, you use VimScript. Now with NeoVim, you're using Lua. And of course, in Emacs, you're using Emacs Lisp. and Xmonad, you're using Haskell. and Qtile, you're using Python. and DWM, you'll use the C programming language. And because you want to extend your software to make it do what you want to do, you'll have to learn a little bit of programming. You don't have to learn how to program. You just need to know how to move some pieces around. You, typically, it's copy and paste. You go look at, at something in Google, right? You do a Google search for what you want to do in that particular piece of software. You'll find a Stack Exchange post about it, and you'll post it in that config. And maybe if it's a compiled language, you'll have to do a quick compilation of your, your new program and boom, you've got it. And you, I'm not a programmer. I'm not a developer. I don't, you know, I've never worked in that line of work. I've never considered myself a programmer. I know a little bit of some of these languages that I have to work in mainly because I configure my software. That's the only reason I know any Haskell. You guys have seen me, you know, do some Haskell programming. The, the only reason I know Haskell the only reason I know Haskell is because I've been an Xmonad user for about 15 years.
<laughs> That's the only reason, you know, I just, I've never earned a paycheck from Haskell. I've never been a part of any kind of development team, even like an open source project or anything. I've never made a single commit to anything like that using Haskell, right? So I just want to show people that you don't have to be a nerd to do this, right? I, I'm just a, a normal guy. Yes, I've used Linux and I've used some of these tools for a number of years. And because of that, of course, I've picked up some things along the way but it's not like i'm some super smart guy right it's, it's not like you can't do exactly all of the stuff you see me do on video and there is a, a another reason i also push things like vim and emacs and tiling window managers you know i, I want you guys to understand how extensible these programs are and i want it to be liberating for you i also because you are gonna have to configure these things in a programming language along the way you might actually like programming and scripting. You may eventually want to get into software development, especially free and open source software development. So in a lot of ways, when I introduce you to tools like Emacs, for example, and you start having to write Emacs Lisp code and you're, you're making all of these custom packages for yourself inside Emacs, you know, along the way, something might click in your head and you might all of a sudden decide one day, you know what? This Emacs thing, you know, at first it was just a cool thing to, it was a, a fun project to configure, but now it's kind of been my gateway drug into becoming a software developer. And I, I hope some of you guys get into software development because you use some of these programs that maybe you've seen me use on the channel. And to me, it seems like a natural progression. That's kind of how these things start. You don't know what you're passionate about until one day, you know, you're you're playing with some new stuff and then it's like, hey, I really like this. Like, you know, playing with my Xmonad config. If I, you know, look at my Xmonad uh tiling window manager config here, you know, that's the window manager I'm in today, right? I've got my random shell color scripts that launch every time I launch a new terminal, which is a, a custom program where I collected all of these uh terminal color shell scripts. Uh, there's about 60 of them I've collected and I pretty much made them into a shell program, a bash script that I wrote where I can get a random shell color script every time I launch a terminal, which was really neat for me because I, I do so much displaying tiling window manager. So I often want to show uh, tiling window manager layouts and things like that. And the easiest way to do that is opening a bunch of terminals. But if I open a bunch of terminals, what if I'm moving windows around? Well, if I move windows around and they're all the same terminal, the, the same empty terminal, you can't tell anything is moving. So the shell color scripts was actually a real world problem that actually solved a problem for me because it helped me better demonstrate stuff on camera. It's not like I did that because I, I think it's pretty or you know, I like having these things in my terminal, although I do. That was just a real world problem that, that I wanted to solve. And again, that's liberating. Another real world problem, uh, if I do uh, super P H here, I've got a list of all of my DM scripts. So DM scripts is another one of my uh, packages. So, uh, so if you go to my GitLab at uh, gitlab.com slash DWT1, you will find a DM scripts repository. It's a collection of about 30 D menu scripts that I've written. Well, most of them I've written. Some of them were contributed by the community. So I mean, it's free and open source software. People have pushed things to the project. People have helped me improve some of the scripts I've written. So we've got a lot of stuff here and I've got a lot of hotkeys to open up some of the D menu scripts I use all the time. For example, if I do super P B for background, I've got this D menu as a script that I wrote for quickly changing my wallpaper, right? So I could do a random wallpaper and if I like it, I'll just hit yes to keep it. Or I could have chose no, I don't like it. And it would have immediately chose another random wallpaper. If I do super PB to get that back, I could do set and it opens SXIV, my image viewer, and it lists all the wallpapers in a particular directory that I have set. And I could just go pick a wallpaper. Maybe this is the one I want. I hit M on the keyboard to mark it and then super shift C to close the window. And now this Einstein wallpaper is my wallpaper. And, and again, that was just something I wanted. It was a simple little program to solve a problem I wanted. I wanted an easy way to set wallpaper from D menu. So I wrote the script and you can actually go watch some of my older videos where I wrote some of these DM scripts 
on camera. Like, I came up with an idea of a real-world problem I wanted to solve, and we just scripted it in Bash right here on camera. So go check out some of my playlists involving DM scripts. I've also got some videos uh, demonstrating shell color scripts, some other stuff I've done recently. You guys know I use Doom Emacs, so, you know, standard Doom Emacs here. And what I've done is, you know, I liked Doom Emacs so much, I wanted to make my NeoVim config look like Doom Emacs. So if I launch NeoVim, you know, you got like a, a, a dashboard kind of like you would in Doom Emacs right here in NeoVim. I set a lot of the standard Doom Emacs key bindings to do similar things here in NeoVim. For example, space FF is find file in Doom Emacs. Space FF kind of finds a file for me here in NeoVim. I could quickly search through the files that, you know, whatever file I want to open. And I, I did a video about that recently. For those of you that like to do web development, I'm not a web dev, it really doesn't interest me, but you know, a while back I made a website, right? I made distro.tube. This is a website, a 21,000 page website that I wrote using org mode. And the main reason it's 21,000 pages is because I've got this section, Linux man pages, where I collected the 21,000 man pages or so that were on my very bloated Arco Linux system that's got so much stuff installed, right? I took all of the man pages and then I converted them using a script, a custom script that I wrote. I converted them from man page format over to an org format and then through the magic of Emacs and the org export functionality within Emacs and then I exported all of those 21,000 org pages to HTML, static HTML pages. So, you know, I've got the A's. We can search through my man pages alphabetically. There is the list of the A packages, right? A whole bunch of stuff here. We want to take a look at one of the man pages. There is the man page, right? So, and, and again, I'm not a web dev. This was just something I did kind of as a passion project, maybe just to see if I could actually do it. I, I was just interested to see if you could actually write a large static website using nothing but org mode in Emacs. And again, I want to reiterate, I'm not a programmer, right? I've got no degrees as far as computer science or anything like that. I went to college to study music. You know, that's what my degrees are in. I have absolutely no professional training at all Anything involving computers, software, programming. I've never worked with computers in a professional setting at a job. I've never used Linux at a job. And that's why I make these videos. I make these videos about these nerdy topics that people imagine are difficult. You know, there's these negative stereotypes with things like Vim and Emacs and Xmonad and DWM and you know all of these programs that require people to put in some work to extend them, to customize them, to configure them. And I, I want to show people that it's not difficult at all, that some of what people perceive about these programs is really not accurate. So I strongly urge everyone to go check out some of these fantastic pieces of free and open source software, especially these open source programs that are extremely customizable and extensible, because these are the kinds of programs that truly are liberating. They're a path to freedom, and in some ways they will change everything that you think you knew about computing, about software, and in some cases even life in general. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Brian, Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Royal, Wes, Why You Bald, Homie, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Diokai, George, Lee, Marstrom, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Deviler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This ran about... Why I make these videos on nerdy pieces of software? This video wouldn't have been possible without these guys. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. I make videos about Vim and Emacs to save people from the horrors of Nano.